So hello and welcome to the video. I have made it to Star Alliance Gold. You don't seem to get physical cards from anyone these days and I know I am creating an editing headache for myself, but here it is. In this video, I'm going to show you how I did it and how much I spent to get to gold. I'll also show how you, at time of recording, could also get to gold for as little as £1,000. Doing so will require you to move quite quickly and you'll have to find perfectly optimised flights, but it is possible. And if you're watching this video a few months after it's released and that particular window has closed, I'll show you how you can get to gold for about £1,300. So if that sounds good, stick around! Hi, I'm Matt. Over the last 25 years, I've travelled a lot. I've lived in five countries on four continents. I've flown over 1.3 million miles. I've visited over 100 countries, every American state, but I'm nowhere near done. So subscribe and perhaps you'll pick up some hacks, hints and tips to make your next trip better. This video will build upon three videos I've previously released. The first two talked about how you would pick a Star Alliance member scheme with which to pursue status. There's 27 airlines in Star Alliance to choose from, so it is by no means a straightforward process, but those videos show you how you might set about making a decision. I don't think I am completely spoiling those videos by revealing here that I picked the Aegean Miles and Bonus scheme. The third video talked about how to find flights that yield status miles in the most efficient manner. That would be called a tier point run in the world of British Airways, hence the name of that video, but it's probably best described as a mileage run. I don't think you need to watch those three videos before watching this video, but if you enjoy this one, then watching those other three will round out your knowledge on this topic. I'll put a link to them in the description below. And a brief word about why you might want status. If you fly once a year on your holly bobs, then it's probably all a waste of time, money and carbon dioxide. If you travel more regularly, then having the benefits of gold will make each of those trips better. Especially if you routinely travel in economy. With the time savings from taking advantage of the business class check-in, fast track security and priority boarding, and the cost saving from access to increased baggage allowances and having food and drink in the lounge before boarding, there could be a business case made for achieving status at the start of a year such that you will then harvest the benefits of that status with every trip you take during the year. The Aegean scheme was attractive to me for a number of reasons, but the thing that really clinched it was the relative ease of re-qualification. I could have gotten gold instantly by matching my existing British Airways status across to another Star Alliance carrier. TAP and Turkish were offering that status match when I was considering all of this. But both of those airlines require you to travel a lot more to renew your status than Aegean does. So although I've spent more on acquiring status than I might otherwise have done, indeed I might have been able to get there without spending anything, I'm now very confident of being able to maintain status almost indefinitely. But if you have a clump of upcoming travel on Star Alliance or indeed on any of the major airline alliances, matching across to secure status for the duration of that travel clump is a great option even if you have no real ambition to renew that status. The airline you match to probably won't love it, but then they shouldn't have offered the status match, should they? So achieving gold status with Aegean is a two-step process. First, you need to achieve silver, which requires 12,000 miles, provided you take two Aegean flights. That rises to 24,000 miles with no Aegean flights. As you might have seen from the channel, I have flown on Aegean a couple of times now, so I have clearly preferred to accelerate the routes to gold by flying with Aegean. A quick aside, when I say miles, I really mean points because the miles flown don't always convert one-to-one -one across to points. Check out those other videos for a more detailed explanation of what I mean there. I won't repeat it here, but let's just stick with calling them miles for the purposes of this video. 
Once you have silver, you then need an additional 24,000 miles, including four Aegean flights, to get to gold, which rises to 48,000 miles if you don't fly with Aegean. Now, the mathematicians amongst you will have spotted that that's 72,000 miles to reach gold if you don't take any Aegean flights, which is actually more than a few of the other schemes. So the Aegean scheme only really shines if you can get those Aegean flights in. And having flown with Aegean six times now, I can report that they are a very good airline. They're a pleasure to fly with. So having to fly with them six times is no great hardship in my opinion. But I will concede that it will be tricky to get status sufficiently with Aegean if you live in South America or Australia or Asia or North America. Anywho, once you have gold, you can re-qualify each year with only 12,000 miles, provided there are again four flights taken with Aegean. And that rises to 24,000 miles if you don't fly at all with Aegean. That's an almost ridiculously low target, far lower, I think, than any of the other Star Alliance carriers. And it feels quite achievable over the course of the year, even if you don't take any Aegean flights. But wait, things got even better for me, and they will remain even better for you until May the 31st. Aegean has reduced its qualification thresholds by 25% meaning I only needed to get 9,000 miles plus two Aegean flights and then 18,000 miles plus four Aegean flights to get to gold. Requalification thresholds have reduced similarly. So let me show you what I did. Now I didn't set out to get to gold as efficiently as is possible. I wanted to get there efficiently, but I also wanted to fly on interesting airlines to interesting places in a way that would make interesting videos for my interesting channel. But I was pleasantly surprised twice by Aegean on my journey, the first being a welcome bonus of a thousand tier and status miles that was awarded into my account when I signed up. Given the reduced thresholds, that instantly got me 11% of the way to silver. I then bought three tickets. The first was London to Athens via Zurich on Swiss, returning on Lufthansa via Frankfurt. That cost me £406 travelling in business class and earned me 4,779 miles, which is an earning rate of 8.5p per mile. As we'll see, that's not brilliant, but it's also not terrible. I then nested a return flight on Aegean Airlines from Athens to Cairo, which got me the two sectors I needed for silver, in business class again, which cost me £346 and earned exactly 5,000 miles, which was an earning rate of 6.5 pence per mile. I then nested another return business class fare on Egypt Air from Cairo to Luxor. This cost me £172 and only earned 952 points, which is a completely awful 18.1p per point. But I wanted to go to Luxor on this trip and I wanted to fly with Egypt Air. I didn't talk about it in the video, but I found that by using my Surfshark VPN to convince Egypt Air that I was actually buying a ticket in Egypt, I was able to get a business class ticket on those flights for less than I would have spent on an economy class flight had I been buying that ticket in London. I'm annoyed that I didn't have my screen recorder running when I found that, but I do routinely use it when I buy tickets going forward and I am sure it will happen again. But it's a great example of what a VPN can do for you, and I have an affiliate relationship with Surfshark where you can get a strong discount if you sign up for their services. The link is in the description below. I'm fed up of Surfshark ads, and I'm sure you are too, but the product is actually really good, and it can save you money. So that was eight flights booked in total, and I achieved silver halfway through flight six from Cairo back up to Athens. Then, a month later, Aegean surprised me for a second time by depositing 500 reward miles into my account as a birthday present. No status points this time, but it was a very nice gesture. So, as a silver card holder, I then needed a further four Aegean flights to accelerate my route to gold. So I booked a flight on Aegean Air from London to Larnaca via Athens in economy class. 
This cost me £304 and earned 4,990 status points, which gave those miles at a very decent 6.1 pence each. As you'll know if you watched that video, I then spent a little more to shift the dates of that trip and I fell into the bid for upgrade rabbit hole, so I ended up spending a little bit more than that, but that's the cost of the ticket that I booked, so it's the cost I will include in this analysis. Then my most recent trip was on Ethiopian Airways from London to Zanzibar via Addis Ababa, again in economy. So on that trip I earned a stonking 9,438 miles and paid £755. That's about 8p per mile, which again is not brilliant, but we booked very close to departure. That routing is quite widely available for £505 later in the year, which delivers those points at a much more reasonable 5.4p each. As I said at the start, I didn't pick these flights with optimization as my primary goal, and Zanzibar was amazing. So that all got me within about 800 points of gold, which is actually quite an annoying amount to be short. I looked around for a short trip that would get me the points that I needed, but nothing really appealed. So in the end, I went to the Aegean website and bought a thousand status miles for 75 euros, which is a cost of 6.3p each. That's actually an interesting benchmark to have in mind when you're thinking about all of this, because it seems a bit daft to pay more than 6.3p per mile to fly somewhere if you can just go to Aegean and buy the points for less. So the tickets that got me to gold cost me just over £2,000, although I'll stress again that getting there at the minimum possible cost wasn't my goal when I set out on this journey. And I had three fantastic trips. Well, two fantastic trips, plus a bit of a weird time in Ayanapa. But the analysis isn't quite complete, as I have accumulated 27,000 award points on the way. It's tricky to value those precisely, but a value of about 1p per point is generally seen as a fair valuation. So I assume that those points have a future value of about £272, which brings the net cost down to £1,774. That's still a really decent chunk of change, but I am sure it is a lot less than most people have ended up paying on their way to gold. So how do you get it for a grand? Well, firstly, you have to move pretty quickly because those reductions in the qualification thresholds will only be around until May the 31st. But assuming you could do that, you would need to find points at the cheapest possible cost. Going back to my Star Alliance tier point run video, I created this table based on real flights that I found. The best was 3.4p per point with TAP. This was not an exhaustive search of all options, but I'm going to assume that with a bit of hunting around, you can find flights that deliver the status points you need at an average of 4p per point. So I assume you'll get your 1,000 point sign-up bonus, and I'll assume that you'll want to accelerate the process by flying with Aegean. The cheapest round-trip airfare I could find that delivers the two Aegean sectors that you need was from Athens to Thessaloniki for €152, Euros, which is £123. Not an exhaustive search, and it only delivers you 500 points at a fairly terrible 25 pence each. But it's much cheaper to do that than to fly the extra 9,000 points you would have to fly if you didn't have those Aegean qualifying legs. This also assumes that you'd be in Athens to be able to take the flights, but as you can see, I'm just illustrating the point here. There are some real world logistics that will require you to deviate perhaps from this optimum pathway. So Silver would then require you to fly seven and a half thousand miles on a non-Aegean carrier, which at four P per point should cost you about 300 pounds. So that's 423 quid in total to get to Silver. To then get from silver to gold, you need another four Aegean flights, and the cheapest four-sector Aegean itinerary I could find was Carnia to Thessaloniki via Athens, which cost €258, Euros, which is about £217. Again, a pretty pitiful cost per point of 22p each, but that clears the way to only needing another 17,000 points to get to gold, and at 4p each that would cost you 680 quid. So a total outlay of £1,320 to get to gold, but don't forget the status points you've earned, which would reduce the cost of gold to £1,049. 
close to a grand and it rounds to a grand. So hopefully you won't be too upset with me for misleading you in the title and being a bit clickbaity with what I've called this video. Of course, if you could get those Aegean flights for less, or if you could get the non-Aegean flights for closer to the 3.4p per point we saw on that Stockholm to Tenerife routing, that should allow you to break the £1,000. Doing all of that is unlikely before May the 31st, I will concede, and it will be impossible if you are watching this video after that date. So I recalculated all of this based on needing Aegean's standard 12,000 points for silver and then 24,000 points for gold. Using the same assumptions, that would require a gross spend of £1,680, but you would be flying more, so would earn more reward miles, uh, which would reduce the net cost by about 360 quid, giving you a net cost of just over £1,300. The Aegean scheme is a little complicated in how the years work, but having qualified today, I am now gold for 12 months until April 2023. Provided I then fly 12,000 miles with four Aegean flights in that year, I will extend my status for another year. Using the maths from earlier, the net cost of that could be as little as £463. And that is then what it would cost you each year to renew your gold status with Aegean. As I said earlier, they may not be the easiest airline to achieve status with. Indeed, you can get it instantly for free with some of their competitors. But I reckon they are just about the best airline to be with if you plan to retain your gold status over multiple years. So thanks for watching. I hope that was interesting and useful. I know some of you have signed up with the Aegean scheme based on those earlier videos, and hopefully this will then help you understand what you now need to do to get the most of that membership. Thanks for watching. Please like this video if you got something from it. Please subscribe if you're new and leave me a comment. Is this something you would consider doing? And finally, I have set up a Patreon account for people who want to support the channel more directly. Please take a look at that. The link is in the description below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you all again in the next one. Goodbye.